Hey everyone, I'm going to do something a little bit different with the video today, kind of a different format. You can kind of see uh, in the background here what I'm talking about with me on screen. Let me know how you how you like this in comparison to the one where I'm in like the small corner or whatever. Uh, I'm just trying something new, trying something fresh. Uh, but we're going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch sales charts uh, when it comes to Japan specifically. Uh, because the Famitsu numbers are in and as you can see on the screen right now, Nintendo Switch owns the top 10 spots. Like I'm looking at it right now. It's the top 10 is all Nintendo Switch. Uh, a couple games have dropped, but pretty much everything else has uh, positives. Ring Fit Adventure uh, has a drop, but we know that Ring Fit Adventure is also has like a massive shortage problem in Japan. Uh, they cannot keep that game in stock, so it's hard to ever know if it's dropping due to, due to interest lowering or if it's just because there isn't any more available. Um, but whatever, Ring Fit's doing great. I wouldn't be surprised if that eventually hits a million units in Japan. Um, Pokemon Sword and Shield is number one. That's not a surprise. Uh, it is uh, been number one pretty much since launch. launch. Uh, it's at 201,838 units this week. Uh, its pace right now is ahead of X and Y and Sun and Moon. Uh, over the same week spans, it's been ahead of it basically since launch. So uh, Sword and Shield is looking like it's going to outperform X and Y and Sun and Moon in Japan. It is behind Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's pace. Uh, for those that are wondering if it's going to pass Ultimate in Japan, I don't actually think that's going to happen uh, for a multitude of reasons, but we can talk about that in another video. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 3 is uh, back up at number 2, jumping up from the 5th spot. Uh, it saw a 30% increase in sales, moving 34,122 units at 319,297 total. Uh, Rimfit Adventure obviously... Uh, went down in sales but jumped up the charts because pretty much everything else that isn't nintendo dropped massively uh so ring Fit adventure despite having lower sales at 16,128 actually jumps up to number three uh it's 328,000 moved so far more than luigi's mansion 3 but uh it's been on the market a little bit longer i'd say uh minecraft the physical version uh, for Nintendo Switch, moved 15,335 units, up 38%. That is over a million units. It's been over a million for a couple weeks. So uh, congrats to Microsoft having a million unit seller physically in Japan on Switch. Uh, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, Tokyo 2020. Um, is obviously a newer game out on Switch. I think it debuted last week at, uh, at the number 8 spot. Uh, but it is, uh, or a couple weeks ago, I guess, at this point. Uh, 15,159 units, up 45% uh, at number 5. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, the game that just keeps on giving, is at the number 6 spot, jumping 3 spots. Uh, it is up 49% week over week at 14,623 units. Man, 2.5 million for that one. Just keeps going. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate with a 43% increase at number 7, also jumping 3 spots, uh, 13,959, moving 3.3 million, almost 3.4 million, just crazy numbers for Smash. Super Mario Party from 2018, folks, jumps from a number 11 to number 8 at 13,872, 47% increase. New Super, oh, I'm sorry, well, I call it New Super, but it's actually Super Mario Maker 2, um, I don't know why I keep throwing that new moniker. <laughs> They're 12,284. That's a 57% increase week over week. That one's slowly getting up. There's 720,000 units. Again, another one I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, you look back at this in two years and it's over a million in Japan. Um, Fishing Spirits Nintendo Switch version has jumped four spots uh, from number 14 to number 10. It's by Bandai Namco. It has moved 11,521 units. Uh, it is up 52% week over week, 243,000, pretty much 244,000 total at this point. Uh, it is also a highly successful game for them and trending ahead of several other releases that Bandai Namco has put out on Switch. So in Japan, anyways. So numbers are going good. Top 10s all Switch. Uh, Harbor Wise, this is where it's interesting because PlayStation 4 actually saw a pretty big increase uh, week over week in terms of sales but uh, didn't see their games perform well. Uh, so that's interesting. Now, some people have looked at this chart, and they see that Nintendo Switch is at 188,000, which is a slight increase over last week, uh, but is a massive decrease from last year, and they're wondering why our Switch sales not doing as well as the same week last year when the Switch is selling better in Japan this year. And the answer is, this data exactly one year ago was the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate launch. So that 278,313 was literally the week the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate launch. Naturally, Nintendo doesn't have a single title coming out in December that's going to match um, the launch of Ultimate. Uh, the closest title they could have had was Pokemon, and that launched last month. So, uh, yeah, that's not necessarily a bad thing that 188,000 is not able to match 278. Uh, there is no huge game 
this month to push switch sales. The switch sales are just consistently saying at 180,000 or higher every single week this holiday period, which is better uh, than switch was doing last holiday period. Although December is likely going to be a much bigger month last year due to smash uh, than it'll be this year overall. But you never know. Uh, we are just now entering into the top sales period in Japan where um, you know they start to go crazy buying stuff for the holidays. You never really know. Um, maybe switch will end up see, seeing a few weeks over 200,000 at some point here. It's obviously awfully close at this point. So we'll, we'll have to see what happens as the rest of December plays out again. Lots of high sales going into the Christmas season. I actually think the week after Christmas is also a big sales period for Japan as well. Um, now, when you look at the breakdown of the system, you see Nintendo Switch Lite was 66,285 of those units, a little bit down uh, from the prior week. But making up for that is that the base Nintendo Switch model, or I guess the red box model, since I don't think they make the base base one anymore, like the original, uh, is 11,000 up, which is why you saw the increase at 122,216 units. So there you go. Uh, Switch is just still killing it. Um, also, uh, this is notable. Um, the Nintendo Switch itself is over 10 million uh, in Japan. It's at 10.6 million. The the OG base model, I guess you want to call it that. I know that there's they've now had that rev that revised base model out there. Uh, is that 9.851 million? By the end of December, the base model alone is going to be over 10 million in Japan. Probably grand total is going to be over 11 million. Uh, that is just insane to me. Um, as you look at, you know, PlayStation 4 sales, you know, Switch is well ahead of the lifetime to date of PlayStation 4, well ahead of the lifetime to date for PlayStation Vita, which is actually decently popular at one point in Japan. Um, obviously, Xbox One never really took off in the Japan. Xbox 360 didn't really do that well. Xbox in general just doesn't do extremely well in Japan. Um, and 3DS is at 24 million, um, with the sales, you know, still clocking in at 4,000, but it's, it's pretty much done. Uh... Can Switch catch the 3DS in Japan? 3DS is one of Nintendo's most popular platforms of all time in Japan. Is it possible Switch could catch that before it's all said and done? I don't know, uh, but I think it's going to make a run at it. I, I could foresee Switch hitting 20 million in Japan. The question is, will it get that extra four, five, six that it needs to pass? I don't know. Uh, it's going to depend on how long the Switch lifespan lasts. Do they refresh the Switch with another newer model but keep it the, the same generation? You know, you know, basically not a Switch 2 but like a Switch Pro. I, I don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, but Nintendo definitely knows what they're doing. So, uh, yeah, I think that's all very interesting. I got all this information uh, from Reset Era uh, because they have a guy that um, follows uh, Media Create very very closely and gets this data out faster than anywhere else on the internet uh so yeah you can you can find this data at a bunch of different websites now but it, they all basically source back to this thread so uh yeah that's kind of cool and i want to know what you guys think in general of the sales in japan um personally i'm actually pretty thrilled uh with these sales figures uh, I know it doesn't affect us much here in the United States because these have nothing to do with the interest of, of, and the kind of games we play in the U.S., but I think that Nintendo is in the midst of their best holiday season pretty much since the Wii days, and back then they had the Wii and the DS going, so like this is trying to do both in one holiday. Uh, obviously, we knew Nintendo Switch was going to dominate these holidays worldwide in general uh, just because... We know that uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One are at the end of life. We know 3DS is way past its end of life at this point. Uh, and we know that uh, there's obviously all the talk for the next-gen system. So even though there's a lot of really super cheap bundles, even in Japan for PlayStation 4 and such, uh, you can get multiple, you know, some of the best games of the generation, uh, you know, bundled in. It's not really going to uh, manifest much because pretty much anyone that wants to own a playstation 4 and wants to play those games probably already has one uh and if they don't there really isn't penetration from uh sony and microsoft at this point uh with their cheap models into say a newer customer base um one thing that was so fantastic about PlayStation 2 and why those sales might never be touched by a home console again is it hit on different consumer bases. It hit on, obviously, the video game community and being one of the, like, the most popular video game device ever. Uh, but it also was able to hit into a more mass market of, of being one of the cheapest DVD and uh, music CD players out there. So uh, Sony kind of got the double whammy there. Late in the PlayStation 4 and Xbox life, uh, I don't really see it trying to penetrate new markets. Um, it, it, it's interesting because I actually think next gen that Microsoft is actually trying to penetrate two different gaming markets at the same time. Three different uh, if 
you know, Project X Cloud works out. But uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how that three pronged approach works for them and uh, if it really blows them up or if it just crashes and burns. Uh, Sony has obviously always been really hyper focused on um they're they're very we're going after you know a certain type of gamer and that's just what we're going to do uh, i know they have multiple ways that they uh, try to attract other people you know knack at launch was one, one way but uh, they haven't really found that blue ocean strategy where they're really good at getting all the casual gamers or uh families necessarily to invest uh they're more so we go after the core gamer and that's just what we do um you know, we was kind of in that situation too, where it did a really good job going after families and stuff. Uh, and you could argue it did it had a lot of really good core gamer games because it did. Uh, but Nintendo never really found that same penetration level um, with core gamers that PlayStation and Xbox 360 did. So it, it's it's kind of that conundrum where uh, yeah, Switch was going to dominate because the competitors haven't done anything to expand their audience beyond what that audience already is. And most people that care about that kind of stuff already own a system. I mean, some might be buying a second system. Some might be trying to get in late in the life cycle so they can get the games for super cheap. Um, that happens. There are budget oriented gamers like that, but, uh, they are the minority at this point. And we got to remember PlayStation four and the Xbox one. I mean, these are platforms that came out in 2013. So five years ago, uh, I mean, six years ago, I guess at this point it's, it's, it's not really uh, new anymore and fresh, and we know about you know new new systems coming next year, and a lot of people are gonna be like, hey, um, you know, Microsoft put out there that anything uh, that that you can play on Xbox One right now will be day one able to play on the on the new system. So um, I think Sony's gonna try to be the same way, and so that being the case, you know, people might be like, yeah, I could buy like a two hundred dollar or one hundred fifty dollar PlayStation Four right now with a few games. Or I could save that money, you know, save up a couple hundred over the next year in addition to it and get the brand new system next year that can also have all these cheap PlayStation 4 games, but all the new greatest looking stuff too. So I don't know. Um, Switch just is dominating. Uh, and these figures in Japan it won't be shocking if that's kind of how it goes worldwide. Uh, maybe not necessarily Nintendo owning the top 10 in software. I don't think that's the case anywhere else in the world, the UK or, or the United States or anywhere else. Uh, but I do think that Nintendo has a hefty amount of games in the top 10 worldwide. Uh, so something to pay attention to when Nintendo's uh, third quarter financial results come out, which should happen towards the end of January, uh, should be the next financial briefing. And we're going to find out some pretty big numbers for Switch, um, both unit sales for the console and all the software updates. It's, I mean, the numbers already look insane when you glance at the website. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel RoboGents from Nintendo Prime. Let me know what you think about my opinions on this, the analysis of this data. Uh, what, are you impressed by this? Are you not impressed? Is this just what you thought? Or is it not as not as good as what you thought it might be? Um, I'm very curious to see your guys' opinions on the sales data. I love talking numbers. I know I don't do a ton of individual news story videos right now, uh, but when it comes to numbers, they're, they're something that are hard to deny. And I like making numbers based arguments or num numbers based opinions because uh, the numbers are, are always something that can't be denied. I'm, I'm actually known in the YouTube MBA circles uh, and, and stuff like that as a very knowledgeable person um, because every argument I make is just based on numbers. Um, I'm, I'm like the Max Kellerman of the comment sections on NBA videos, except uh, <laughs> a little a little less out there with certain opinions, uh, trying to project cliffs for players and stuff. Like I, I just look at numbers and uh, regurgitate numbers and tell people, well, this is, what, this is like a fact-based thing you can't argue against. So, uh, Especially when it comes to the Bucks, because I'm a big Bucks fan. Um, yes, Corey, the Bucks are legit one of the best teams in the NBA. Congrats on your ring last year in Toronto. Not happening again this year. All right, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I, I am Nathaniel Robojance from the Tender Prime. If you like this video, drop a like. Subscribe for more content. Uh, YouTube did recently do a purge. That's why my numbers are below 46K right now because uh, YouTube actually told me, hey, look, we're purging a bunch of dead accounts on your on your channel. So that's all right. I mean, dead accounts don't help me out. So uh, subscribe. Let's get back up to 46K and, and go on to 50K. Make that a goal in 2020. Uh, and I will catch you guys in the next video.